get him to the hospital. Come on. What did you have for dinner last night? A sandwich and a cup of coffee. And you got to bed about 2. Oh, I think it was closer to 3.30, sir. So you overslept this morning, grabbed a donut and a cup of coffee, ate it on the run, and made it through the gate just ahead of the whistle. I'm afraid that's just about it, sir. Stack, you're laying down on the job. What do you mean? Last month it turned out more work than anybody else in the line. But this morning you fell behind. And you'll keep doing less and less if you don't take care of yourself. You've got to keep fit. You work hard, Stack, and part of your job is keeping fit. Each individual can contribute to his own health protection and improvement by adopting a few simple ways of healthful living. Each of us must accept this responsibility and stick to it with a firm purpose. The best time to cure an illness is before it happens, by eating the right foods, doing the right things for recreation. With doctors going into the service every day, the rest of us are going to have all we can do to handle the really serious cases. And when new workers become ill, you not only hold up production, but you require medicines and doctor's services that are more urgently needed by the armed forces. Well, what am I supposed to do to keep fit? I think the general manager will answer that question for you at the noon meeting. You've all been reading in the newspapers, hearing over the radio, about the opening of a second front. Well, I say that the second front has been open several months, right here in the factories of America. Since that time, we've been fighting the battle of the production line and winning it. But all of us have not been doing our parts because we haven't been keeping fit. Only this morning, a man keeled over in one of the shops and had to be taken to hospital. He lost not only his own time, but he slowed down the assembly line. And there's been a daily average of 40 men absent from work because of sickness. Unnecessary sickness in most cases. Add up these various losses of time, and they amount to a staggering total of lost man hours. Enough, in fact, to produce many more planes in six months than were lost in the RAF's colossal raid over Cologne. These planes are as surely lost to our fighting forces as if they'd been shot down by enemy anti-aircraft fire. One way that we can reduce these losses is by keeping fit so that we can be on the job every hour of every working day. Miss Albritton of the Government Nutrition Service is going to give us some pointers on keeping fit for the use of the proper foods. Miss Albritton. It's very nice to see all you men, but I should really be talking to your wives. They're the ones who fix your meals. A great many of our meals are hastily prepared, with too little thought given the menu. Mommy! Oh, don't bother me now, dear. I've only got five minutes to get Daddy's dinner ready. Take that package upstairs, will you? That's a good girl. Don't fall. <laughs> Dick took one look at his dinner and said it wasn't fit to eat. He got up and left and said he was going to a restaurant. Well, it's none of my business, but what did you give him for dinner? Well, I was in a hurry. And I fried some pork chops and I had some macaroni and some potatoes and I warmed them up. Well, I don't blame him. What do you mean? I mean you're giving them too many starches. Mind you, those foods are all right in their place. But you should balance them with plenty of good green vegetables. Oh, Dick doesn't like vegetables. Well, he would if you cooked them right. Now, if I were you, and love my husband, I'd take time out for my bridge to learn how to cook for him. You'd not only make him lots happier, but you and Dick wouldn't need to go to the doctor as often as you do now. Where am I going to learn how to cook? I can't always be running into someone else's kitchen. No, but you can go to one of the government cooking schools run by their nutrition experts. Nutrition experts under government sponsorship have prepared charts showing a well-balanced diet for families of every income bracket. These charts include plenty of the right kind of food and are available to everybody, as are the cooking schools which have been established throughout the country. A well-balanced meal means the right proportions of the right foods. Usually, meat provides the basic dish, preferably broiled or roasted. If a roast is properly selected and prepared, it can serve as the main dish for an additional meal or two. Potatoes may be served if desired. If they are baked, the valuable mineral contents of the potatoes are retained.
time during the day, drink at least one pint of milk. And it's a good idea to have a couple of tomatoes in your lunch. Above all, don't forget to include at least one vegetable in that well-balanced meal. Salads are an excellent way to include these vegetables, or even with fresh fruits. If you haven't had your eggs for breakfast, you can have them in a custard dessert. It's a grand way to get extra vitamins. As I said before, a well-balanced meal means the right proportion of the right food. Make your milk, Susie. Say, that was a swell dinner, honey. I'm glad you liked it. Like it? Why, that green stuff is the best thing I ever put in my mouth. That green stuff was squashed, Dick. You've always said you didn't care for vegetables. Well, I like them now. You saw the way I went for that vegetable salad. I guess I didn't waste my time going to government cooking school, did I? I'll say you didn't. Listen, honey, you keep serving me meals like that, and pretty soon I'll be able to build a plane a day by myself. Miss Albritton has told us the importance of eating the right kind of foods. But another factor in our Keeping Fit program is the right kind of recreation. We must keep our bodies fit through exercise. Athletics of all types, calisthenics, individually and in groups, sandlot baseball, tennis, both varieties. Bowling is a lot of fun and offers plenty of exercise. Swimming, horseback riding, archery. In fact, there are any number of sports through which we can work off that excess poundage. Almost anything would be better than letting ourselves lie around and get soft. Lie around sucking that stuff all day. You won't keep fit this way. Hey, Andy, come on, I'll pitch you a game. Be right with you, Lon. How about you get your lazy self out there? Lon's been calling you all day for a game of horseshoes. Oh, come on, ma'am, all you do is holler about yeah, stuff. Yeah, do you good. Go I'll on, lose it. <laughs> you know, Andy, as a horseshoe pitcher, you might make a good bowler. Hey, I used to bowl 160 average. 160? Sure. Say, hey, that's pretty good. Why don't you join our team? Oh, I can't afford it. Oh, it doesn't cost much, and besides, it's great exercise. Oh, I don't think I was meant to exercise. Goodbye. In order to keep our production lines running full speed, and to avoid this loss of precious man hours, we must keep ourselves physically fit by following the five essential rules of good health. One, eat the proper food. Eat three meals a day. Two, get proper rest. Go to bed on time. Get up on time. Three, go to your doctor once a year. Nowadays, physicians can prevent many illnesses and diseases. Four, keep clean. Plenty of baths. Lots of soap. Drink lots of water. And five, Play some each day. Give your mind and body a change from the daily grind of the job. A sound body makes a sound mind. And together they mean better and faster work to aid in winning this war. So, let's all adopt as a slogan, keep fit to do our bit.